All right, in this lesson right here, what we're going to be doing is introducing you to the basic tools that you're going to be using for working with terrain, just the basic terrain itself. We're also going to show you, very basic, how to go about adding sunlight into your scene. Right, Logan? That's right. Just so we have a better idea of how some of the tools are working with the, with the light and shadowed side of the train, we'll be able to, be able to see the effect in 3D more easily. Now, starting out at this level here, one of the things we want to show you, which is really cool, is what happens if you selected a texture that you didn't mean to select when you actually created a new layer? Well, we've done that here. We've got a, a, a texture that we're using right now for layer one that we don't want. We don't want a snow type level here. Right, so to go about swapping this texture out, it's very easy. Simply load up the texture package that you actually wanted to use, and I'll spend just a second longer to make sure I grab the right one. And with that in place, I'll simply select the texture I want to use for the train itself. With it selected, and with uh, the layer I want to change selected, I can right-click on it and say, Set Texture from Current. With that, now I've reset the texture. It's that Very simple. Very nice. All right. Now, back over on the Terrains tab, we'll start going through and uh, try out the various tools on this terrain. First, uh, make sure once you're working with terrain, make sure that the height map itself is actually selected. Some of the tools don't matter, but some do. You have to have this height map selected before some tools will apply. So with it selected, we'll start with simple vertex editing. Now with that, we have this brush where we can define a select or define what to select. And if you want to select a group of vertices based on this brush, it's as simple as left clicking once over the terrain. And if I was to move in on that a little bit, you'll see we have a lot of uh, uh, grayscale colored dots. Now, the way this worked is I've just selected part of the train. So if I wanted to affect it, I could um, hold control, then both the left and right mouse buttons, and move up and down on the mouse. And you see I can control that selection, move it up or down. Now, the way this was defined is you notice the yellow brush, how I have the inner ring and the outer ring. Basically, anything inside that brighter yellow inner ring will get affected 100%. And these settings correspond to these options up here. You have your inner radius and outer radius. So the inner radius, so anything within 256 units, will be affected 100%. As you can see, how you had a kind of a flat top across this the selection that I moved up. And the outer radius simply f uh, f has the effect fading out. Now the strength is the overall, like, anything within the inner radius where it'll be 100% is 100% because that's what the strength is set to. If we were to lower this and simply left click again, you notice the inner vertices are a uh, much darker gray, so they won't move nearly as much because we've lowered the strength. And now the way vertex editing works, since you predefine a selection before working with it, let me lower the radius in a little bit so I can make, a, make more selections. If you click once, that's one selection, and you can add to it by holding control and clicking elsewhere, and the selection will grow. Let me go ahead and set my strength back up just so it's a little bit easier to see. Now, one, and you'll notice that if you continue to keep, uh, continue to click, the selection will grow and actually fade into itself, which is kind of cool. So you can, you have a decent amount of control and a smooth control over vertex editing using this method. Now, one last thing is you can lower, with, with soft selection, you notice how you have a soft selection where it fades from completely selected to uh, almost not affected. We can turn this off, and now if I was to left click, I'll just grab single vertices, which is kind of cool because then I can turn that back on and hit select, and it'll actually fade out again based on the, uh, the radius is set. Very nice. Radii. So with that, that's a simple vertex editing. Again, with a selection made, you can hold control, both mouse, mouse buttons, to move the selection up or pull it in. So that would be the first method of actually going in and affecting the height map. After that, we have select. Now, what select will do is simply, um, it's used by simply holding control and left dragging, and you specify a region to work with. Now, this is used in conjunction with the Terrain Generator, which um, is found on the Miscellaneous tab. Now, this can work in two modes, either based off of a selection or over the entire height map. For starters, we'll just uh, run off the selection we made. So I'll go ahead and with the default settings hit Build, and you'll notice you've got a kind of, it's, it took everything inside there and gave it a, a nice um, random generation or random values and smoothly generated out a little bit of train. It's a nice way to start if you don't want to start with a completely flat plane, if you want some 3D detail already in place. And step simply generates 
how tight or how fine the uh, the areas are if we were to double this and rebuild you can see that that was um, a lot more detail in a smaller amount of space and the strength is simply how much or how much to affect it how much up or down it'll move the train if this was up to say 415 built that's a much more noticeable effect and then of course we could ignore the selection and use the entire height map and let me lower some of this back down and if I was to hit build it'll it'll generate train across the entire thing. So I hit build and how about we lower the strength down to about 50 or 40 or 50. So this would give a, a starting point for train. I might lower that all the way down to 5. There, so you just barely have a little bit of smooth deformation over the train. Give you more of an organic start before you go in and customizing every little piece of the terrain. It's very convenient. So that's the train generator and how to use the select tool along with it. Now we get into actual painting. This is where we can take the brush and actually drag it across the surface to generate terrain. Now the uh, the default strength of 100 is a little bit strong for this effect, so I'm actually going to take it down to about half. And the way painting works is to pull terrain up, you hold control, and left drag across the surface. And you can see you can affect the terrain. It's very cool. To do the opposite, to push the terrain down, hold control and right mouse, and you can push the terrain in. Now this is very powerful because it allows you to go in and sculpt your train almost as if it was clay. So with that in place, we might want to go ahead at this point and set up sunlight so we, it's, it gets a little bit easier to see the, uh, the detail of the train itself. In order to do that, I'll simply deactivate train editing by going back into camera mode. Now, the first thing we need is an actual sunlight actor. So I'll go up to the actor class browser, go under light, and there's sunlight. I can right click on the train itself, add sunlight, let me zoom in up on a little, move it up, and let me align it, actually point it down at the, uh, the surface a little bit by uh, deselecting it, grabbing the locked selected actors and clicking on it, that way I can very easily just point it down at the ground, something like that, unlock from it, and that's a very easy way of positioning it. Of course if you prefer you could all select it and use brush rotation.